The energy industry is by far the largest contributor to climate change, accounting for 70% of worldwide emissions. Global technology company SLB is driving energy innovation for a balanced planet and is creating new energy technology to make oil and gas production cleaner to deliver reliable, affordable and sustainable energy to all. I sat down at the COP28 talks here in Dubai to talk to the Vice President of Sustainability for SLB, Mickey Corcoran. COP28 here in Dubai, I gather this is your second COP now. What is the main reason for you being here this year then? So COP28 is quite monumental for us because it's the first time really the private sector has been allowed to really be part of the green zone showcase and also the discussions in the blue zone. So SLB as a technology company, we're very excited to showcase what we can do for the energy transition. Any exciting announcements that might happen this week or may have had happened already? Uh, yeah, absolutely. I mean, decarbonizing oil and gas is absolutely something that we are aligned with as a company, as a technology company. The announcements that happened this week around the oil and gas industry committing to net zero by 2050 and also near zero methane by 2030 is really important for us to help us align our technology and solutions to help our customers to decarbonize. Very excited to hear much more about SLB. Let's take the conversation over to our studio. Thanks, Laura. Mickey, wonderful to be sitting with you here at COP28 Dubai. Thank you very much, Laura. It's fantastic to be here. Tell us a little bit more about SLB. You are very much a global company across 100 countries, I believe, and you supply technology to make the oil and gas industry cleaner, essentially. Yes, exactly. So. First of all, I'm the Vice President of Sustainability for SLB, so I look after the, the strategy for the company in terms of uh, sustainability. And, you know, one element that, just a step back, that's extremely important is where we see the energy industry going today. You know, the energy mix of the energy industry t today is certainly not the same as it will be tomorrow. And the world needs affordable, reliable and sustainable energy and there's a, um, a significant amount of investment in technology that needs to be made to make that possible. We're a technology company for the energy industry so we feel it's imperative to help our customers decarbonize their operations through technology but also to help accelerate the new energy ecosystem of tomorrow through technology. Well through these transition technologies you've managed to avoid 700,000 tonnes of CO2 emissions. Yes. A really incredible figure there. That's the equivalent I've been reading to taking more than 150,000 cars off the road. How have you managed to do this? Yeah, so it's really interesting because for us, what's really important is to understand what are our customers' priorities in terms of decarbonization. So in 2022, we released our portfolio of transition technologies. So we have 36 technologies in the portfolio. And these technologies have been designed to help our customers decarbonize their operations. And we hope that in the future, we will be able to continue investing in technology to make it more efficient, um, investing in technology that will help our customers to lower emissions in their operations. And this is where we want to move to the future. Where do you see the role of oil and gas within the energy mix of the future? When you look at um, emerging economies, you know, it's going to be a challenge for those emerging economies to be able to accelerate um, the renewable energy uh, development and adoption. So oil and gas is going to be a big part of the energy mix of the future. So for us, it's important to understand that mix and understand that, that you know, we need to continue to invest in decarbonizing oil and gas and also in uh, the development of technologies for renewable energy. Well, apparently half of all emissions that come from the oil and gas industry actually come from methane, which is 80 times more potent than, than CO2 emissions, which is truly shocking as well. So how is your technology helping to sort of combat methane? So the important thing about methane is that, yes, a large part of it is coming from oil and gas operations. And in fact, 16% of the energy emissions today come from methane. 
one of the real fantastic movements that we've seen in COP28 is the commitment from uh, more of the oil and gas industry companies to commit to near zero methane by 2030. So in 2022, we have developed our C's business, which is SLB end-to-end -end solutions, which not only helps our customers to build roadmaps to um, a, a near zero methane future, but also technology that allows continuous methane measurement and monitoring, which is a step above the technology that's available today, where it's usually uh, captured with drones, where we can continuously monitor and measure, which also helps our customers realize the action that they're taking and the impact that they're having on methane reduction. You've made huge commitments to reduce scope one, two and three emissions. Tell us about that strategy and how you're, how you're getting on. Yeah, so thanks, Laura. We have absolutely, we're very proud of our commitments, actually. So we set out our journey in 2019 when we took a scientific approach to build our emissions inventory. And from there, we understood where we needed to prioritize and actually set our commitments for scope one, two and three. So our commitments today are that we will reduce scope one and two 30% by 2025 and 50% by 2030 and we'll reduce scope three 30% by 2030, absolute. So in terms of scope one and two, the main levers that we've been using to reduce is we've been very focused on renewable energy and ensuring that um, we are taking consideration of the capacity of renewable energy that's available to us. And today, 33% of our facilities are actually powered by renewable energy, which has a huge impact on our scope two. And then, of course, we have a lot of operations uh, globally where we're using fuel in the field. And our strategy here has been to look at efficiency, understanding where we use the fuel, where we can reduce the use of fuel, using technology to be more efficient in terms of the equipment that consume the fuel, and also looking at job design. And this is the strategy going forward, is focusing on that to ensure that we can meet our interim goals as we move towards 2030. Very impressive indeed. As we mentioned, you are very much a global company. Tell us about some of the new markets that you're looking at and the technology for different markets, or is it a, is it a matter of one size fits all? Yeah, you know, it's a great question. And, you know, we've spent quite some time looking at the strategy for decarbonizing both industry and outside of the industry. What we look at as a company is what are our strengths? And when you look at the energy transition, I think it's important to understand what your strengths are, the challenges of uh, decarbonization, and then understanding also where you can build partnerships uh, to bridge those gaps to be able to accelerate the transition. One area that we're investing in is carbon capture and storage. So this is where we can capture CO2 from the atmosphere and then safely and reliably store it in the ground. So we are partnering with TDA Technologies to be able to scale up the technology to ensure that we can capture CO2 efficiently. And then we use our existing subsurface capabilities to ensure that we are screening and developing the areas where we'll be able to safely store and uh, monitor for reliability for the future. A fascinating insight there into SLB, transforming the oil and gas industry. Thank you so much for joining us. Thank you very much, Laura. It was a pleasure.